for round three of the Porsche Visit Cayman Islands Sprint Challenge Great Britain. We're at Brands Hatch, the full Grand Prix circuit, and the Caymans having been as part of the British Touring Car Championship Bill a couple of weeks back at Thruxton, are part of the British GT support bill this weekend on a fabulous circuit. Theo Edgerton is the man in charge in the championship, having won both races outright at Thruxton. The championship caters for the pros and the ams, a split across two classes. It is a moderately chilly day, track temperature only 14.8 degrees centigrade, as all of these identical 3.8 litre, 425 horsepower uh, Caymans. The uh, 718 iteration of the Cayman GT4 Club Sport set off on their final formation lap, weaving around busily to get warmth into the tyres. And Theo Edgerton, the championship leader, starts on pole with former single-seater turned Lamborghini racer Jack Bartholomew alongside him on the front of the grid. Charles Clark is going to line up third. His car you'll easily distinguish because its livery harks back to works Group C Porsches of the early 80s and alongside is Ethan Hawkey, uh, who was one of the front runners in the championship last year. Matthew Armstrong and last year's AM champion Ambrosio Perfetti share the third row of the grid with row four being race newcomer uh, Alex Malikin and Ian Humphreys, who leads the AM class in the championship in the Beluga entry. Mike Price missed Thruxton, but he's here this weekend. He's ninth on the grid and 10th is Porsche veteran Nigel Rice. 11th is Carl Cabers, and lining up alongside him is Charles March, who missed the Thruxton races because he was uh, not in the best of health, but it's good to have him making his debut in the championship this year with the uh, septuagenarian Peter Chambers, 13th, and another newcomer this year, Kurt Leimer, the Swiss Hong Kong driver, 14th on the grid. So the cars now making their way through Westfield, Dingledale and up towards Sheen Curve. 22 you're looking at there is Carl Cavers. They're great looking cars these. The championship in only its second season and uh, very much the perfect way to go racing Porsches at a high level. If you're an AM, they're really user-friendly cars. If you're a pro, uh, they're a really good way of learning about a GT4 car with a view to going GT racing, either GT4, ultimately GT3, or, of course, going in a slightly different direction into the one bait higher level Carrera Cups that run regionally and nationally and ultimately, of course, Porsche Super Cup. So depending on what your ultimate aim is, this is the championship for you. And these are largely bulletproof cars and you can race them in a variety of series if you so desire. You could go and do lots of track days or you could go and do BLN type races in Germany as well as this championship. So once you've got the car, you can get a lot of mileage for your money. So Theo Edgerton slots into place on pole position. Jack Bartholomew with him at the front of the grid. He'd never raced at Thruxton before, whereas he has raced at Brands, admittedly in single-seaters, but uh, now in Porsches, Jack Bartholomew in the green and white car lining up on the outside of the front row for Simon Leonard's Red Line Racing Team. One to watch at the back of the grid, the very spectacular colour scheme that adorns Kurt Leimer's TPR entry, Team Parker Racing. So there is the grid, we're good to go, and it is a race that, unlike Thruxton, has fans looking on trackside because the gates are open, fans are back, racing is set to get underway because that green flag says to Colin Oakley, the clerk of the course, everybody is back from the formation lap. It is a 25-minute race, not a set number of laps. Flag goes out the first time the leader crosses the line once 25 minutes are up. Five-second board is shown, and so now, the drivers will look towards the lighting gantry. Theo Edgerton then for TCR is on pole position. Light goes red. Who is going to make the best start then as the lights go out? There's a very good start by the white car of Ethan Hawkey, who is away like a robber's dog round the outside line of the outfoxes, Jack Bartholomew. He also comes up to have a go at Theo Edgerton as they dive down towards Paddock Hill Bend, but he's not able to find a way all the way around the outside of him, but not for the want of trying, as the cars now blast uphill for the first time. Very good getaway by Hawkey then to go second. You're on board here with 27 Ian Humphreys, the AM leader in the championship, and Charles Clark getting forced out wide there. He's dropping back in the pack as they come downhill for the first time. Hawkey down to third. Bartholomew is back ahead of him as the cars wriggle their way then now along Cooper Strait for the first time of asking. And Theo Edgerton now trying to make good his escape while they're squabbling behind him. So onto the Grand Prix loop they go then for the first time. This is Ian Humphrey's view. He's busy at work then as the cars blast along the fast descent down towards Hawthorne. Good battles rage on lower down the order as well here. As you can see, Mike Price busy in the mix as well. So the cars turning their way now through the uh, right-hander of Hawthorne along the Derrick Minter straight up towards the right at Westfield. Theo Edgerton absolutely blitzed everybody at Thruxton. His second season in the championship came good at the end of last year at Silverstone. There is Mike Price 
championship debut for this year in the Forella Stakes racing car. Mike Price stepping up from club level Porsche racing into the championship as he did last year. And it's good to have him back as the Carl's battle on that he came through the uh, Porsche Club and then the 750 Motor Clubs championships. Big slide there from, was that Carl Cabers running behind Mike Price as they drop now down towards Clark Kerr for the first time. There's Pete Chambers on the inside looking at the white, blue, black, green, very distinctive car battling with Kurt Leimer. Peter Chambers, Porsche champion, going back to the 90s, going back to the 70s, very busy hot rod racer. And it's good to have him back. Jordan Racing Team subbing out the deal to Simon Leonard's Red Line squad to operate the car for this year. But Peter Chambers battles on as there. Charles Clark goes to the inside. Look, 23, fending him off Alex Malakin. Alex Malakin doing a good job because although he's done quite a bit of track days, uh, the Into Racing Russian, who is based in Surrey, is new to racing. So he might know his way around certain circuits, but going really good here, showing he's got the race craft. Theo Edgerton led at the end of the opening lap by six tenths of a second from Jack Bartholomew. This is Ian Humphrey's view. Alex Malakin, incidentally, the leading am at the moment, whereas Ian Humphreys here, he's only second in class, so he's got to get up past Charles Clark before he can get onto terms with Alex Malakin, who's doing a really good job further up the road. Down they dive, there is 27, so that is Ian Humphreys. A 46-year-old Birmingham driver, he came from a brick car into Porsche Racing. Then good job, he was runner-up in the championship in the AM class last year with three wins. Ambrosio Perfetti, last year's AM champion, running behind Ian Humphreys. And for points, Perfetti needs to get on with the job because he had a none finish at Thruxton. He fell off the road in the first race when it was a, a wet, dry race. Uh, so he's on the back foot for points, he needs to come good. Theo Edgerton is leading the way then up front and is he gapping the opposition as he comes out of Clark Kerr. There is Humphrey still hard at work in the Beluga car. Ben Hetherington's team heading up towards the timing line. So Theo Edgerton is pulling away. Fastest lap he's just done. Bartholomew runs second. Ethan Hawkey is third. Brother of Esme Hawkey, who raced well to win the Pro-Am crown in Carrera Cup GB last year. Fourth is Matt Armstrong, whose uh, father Justin races in Carrera Cup GB. And Alex Malakin is fifth, sixth Charles Clark, and there seventh is Ian Humphreys with the confectionery magnate Ambrosio Perfetti right up behind him. Go back two years, Ambrosio was busy racing in uh, pre-66 2 litre 911 Porsches in the uh, Peter Auto historic uh, Porsche Championship, now in a very different type of Porsche, a modern car, and getting on with the job, chipping his way into contention in class as Edgerton leads the way. There is Jack Bartholomew in second place. Great noise these cars make as well. Plunge downhill. Their third, Ethan Hawkey. Now fourth, Justin Armstrong. This is the fight for fifth. Look, Alex Malakin, the leading am, and he's got this cushion of the fifth-placed pro, Charles Clark, right up behind him. There is Charles Clark, look, in the 77 number car. You see what I mean about the livery, harking back to the early 80s and the worked Group C Porsche 956, then 962s. And the also distinctive colour scheme that adorns Ambrosio Perfetti's car. Uh, Chippa Chip, just one of the brands that the Perfetti family has within the portfolio. And the whole family seems to go racing as well. His uh, brother Daniele Perfetti, for example, British GT champion for motivation, Michael Kane, a few years back. So this battle pack, fifth all the way down to now eighth, comes out of Clark Curve. We've had the first fifth of the race, so five minutes are in the book as the leaders come by. The race lead is going up. Edgerton is doing fastest lap after fastest lap, and Perfetti now has got himself onto the back of Humphreys. So rather than Ian Humphreys being able to attack for position, he's having to go defensive, isn't he, now, uh, and try and fend off the traffic. Humphreys defence from Perfetti. That releases Charles Clark to come up and have a go at Alex Malakin for fifth place overall. Perfetti with the indicator on, thinks about getting past on the inside and then thinks better of it. Slots back in behind Ian Humphreys as they round 30. So that battle pack of four is just pairing off slightly. Further up the road, through goes Matt Armstrong. Ambrosio Perfetti then. In number 51, the into racing entry, dives downhill. And there he's on the tail, as you see, of Ian Humphreys. 19 minutes still on the clock. Charles Clark hustles on. His father, Steve Clark, ex-British GT and occasional Carrera Cup GB racer. So uh, Charles being thrown in, really, at the deep end here into the pro class. Uh, he only did a couple of races at Silverstone at the back end of last season, but drove in the Porsche Club Championship last year, but relatively inexperienced. 
So Charles Clark getting on with the program as Perfetti pulls out to have a look and seeing if he can unsettle Ian Humphreys, who has clawed his way back onto the tail of Clark. But you've got to say, Alex Malikin here deserves a big cheer. Up the inside, tries to squeeze Clark, and he goes to the other side. Uh, Malikin, he's really defending very nicely. He's not the indicator on, a bit like Perfetti had done. Novice Cross still on the back. Look, he is not for making a mistake, is he? Clark is all over him like a cheap suit. And now he makes the move on the inside line. You can see the AM standings on the screen, and Clark does this time make it work under braking. Dives through on the inside, breaks late, breaks hard, goes through and takes over fifth place. But Malikin still leads the class. Now, it is only now, in a sense, that he's more at risk. OK, he's lost a place overall. Doesn't matter, doesn't affect points. But now, look, he's got Humphreys up the inside, and suddenly the class lead is lost. Ian Humphreys absolutely dive bombs in, and Perfetti comes with two wheels on the grass to have a go as well. All of a sudden, life has got rather bleak for Alex Malikin. Now he's not the wipers on as well. It's all getting a bit lively inside the cockpit. Battle further back, Nigel Rice. He's a long way down, but Nigel is up with Carl Cavers and then Mike Price, and we've got rain falling. So the wipers may have been knocked on in the heat of battle, but they're going to be needed because there is rain falling on the start line area. It's not torrential, it's just spots and sprinkles but that's going to affect lap times, and remember, they're all on slick tyres, so this is going to be really interesting to see who is better at coping with the conditions. One also has to assume, for the moment, that it's not consistent. It might be a bit wetter on the Indy circuit than out under the trees, where the road might be shielded for the moment. Mike Price there, you see, in the distinctive green car. He's put the wipers on. So the race leader, Theo Edgerton, is about to come across the timing line. As he does so, that last lap was the 32 and a half, so he's lost half a second on that lap as he now has to assess the conditions. And Charles Clark is absolutely on a mission, diving through on the inside there of Matthew Armstrong. So, release from behind Alex Malakin. Crikey, Charles Clark absolutely charging. Great to see. Bartholomew and, and uh, Ethan Hawkey are covered now by three seconds. So, Edgerton's lead is two, second to third is three, but it could all be changing under the worsening weather that we've now got at Brands Hatch. Sun at the start of the day, giving way to rain, and it's wipers on pretty much for everybody. You can understand why the AMs might be being more cautious in their pace and, indeed, in visibility. Get the wipers on nice and early. Perfetti puts them down the power, and the car snakes underneath him. The rear of the field is newcomer Charles March, who, of course, is part of the uh, Goodwood family. And off the road has gone. Now, who was that? Is that Jack Bartholomew, I think it is, who's plunged into the gravel? Yes, it is. So the man that was second, Jack Bartholomew, in the gravel. As the rain falls, Jack Bartholomew off the road on this lap six. So Jack Bartholomew, how did he get there? All by himself. Lost traction on slicks, remember, in the wet, and around it goes. Jack Bartholomew in the gravel, and, of course, now the fear is if anybody else goes off, they might strike him, and so safety car is deployed for that. That means they will all bunch up then. Safety car deployed. Out of the car gets a very disgruntled Jack Bartholomew, so you could argue that uh, for somebody of his experience, he should not have done that, but even... The experienced drivers can be caught out by the conditions. So after a, a third and a second at Thruxton, Jack Bartholomew is a retirement. And uh, now drivers are trying to maintain tyre pressure and tyre temperature as they are at a much slower pace now behind the safety car. This will be a few minutes, I would have thought, while the drivers uh, have to circulate and the marshals and the MSV track staff get that car out of the gravel. So there is the uh, safety car. And Theo Edgerton's advantage, which had just gone up to five seconds over Ethan Hawkey, of course now is two-fifths of not a lot. Race order behind. Third is Charles Clark. So he suddenly uh, gained ground hugely, having passed two cars and inheriting a third place. Uh, fourth is uh, Matt Armstrong. Fifth is Ian Humphreys. Alex Malakin is sixth. Seventh, Ambrosia Perfetti. Eighth is Nigel Rice. Carl Cavers is ninth. Mike Price is tenth. And this another look at Jack Bartholomew. He's already lost it before he comes into shot, but around he goes. The gravel trap does its job, stops the car from getting to the barrier, but, of course, it also stops the car relatively close to the edge of the road, and it brings out the safety car. There, number seven, with the Spitfire colour scheme adorning Charles March's car. Charles Henry Gordon Lennox, the Earl of March and Kinrara, to uh, give him his full title, as it is Sunday. And uh, Charles March has done a little bit of racing at uh, the Goodwood Revival, but now coming into a very different 
area altogether of modern racing. And I've got to say that looking out of our window, the weather over the last couple of laps has become really nasty indeed. And the clerk of the course, he even, of course, to keep the race going, will be keeping a ho-ho weather eye on what's going on because they're on slick tyres and if the circuit becomes really wet and it's unsafe, then a decision has to be made. Yesterday, the uh, uh, Ginettas had a, a late afternoon race and, again, the heavens just opened. Uh, heavier than we have now, it must be said, but that race largely carried on behind the safety car. So um, the safety car deployed because of an incident. Admittedly, that was triggered in turn by the weather. Here, you can see it's not torrential. Yeah, the road has got wet, it's got greasy, it's got damp, it's slippy, but if those slicks have enough temperature, they can just about cut through and still operate. But the longer we're behind the safety car, the more temperature they're losing, the more edgy it's going to get on the restart. You've got to say as well, actually, just looking at this, they're not quick laps by the safety car. Ian Humphreys accelerating, weaving, keeping the temperatures and the pressures up as best he can. You hear what I mean about the great noise these cars make. Uh, let's just ride with him on the run-up towards Paddock as there is uh, 89 Jack Bartholomew's car ready to be hoiked out of the way. And there is the slippery approach to Paddock Hill there. The restart's going to be lively, isn't it? Everybody will have to be oh so tippy-toe in going through Paddock. So good that we've got the fans back. They are thinking, ah, oh, yes, good old Brown Touch Ray as they shelter a paddock. There uh, is the Joel March car. So another of the Team Parker Racing fleet. TPR here and at Monaco and also operating British GT here. So a busy weekend for the team. So Jack Bartholomew, the one uh, casualty of the conditions, and we are just over half distance how many racing laps are we going to get strange actually from looking at our view of the circuit through the window it looks like the rain is really heavy look at the track it doesn't need to be that bad at all so the direction the rain is falling is uh, perhaps tricking people there's hardly any spray on the windscreen there jack bartholomew is out of the gravel and he's now going to drive back and hopefully we'll be offline he's trying to shake the gravel out of the bottom of the car but he is putting gravel down on the road Sometimes a driver is asked to drive on the grass to do that, then it doesn't fall all over the racetrack, and then catch people out who in turn go off the circuit. But you can see, yes, he's shaking it out of the bottom, but equally it's being spread around the road, which isn't ideal, especially when you add gravel to the rain. The restart's going to be lively, that is for sure. There, look, the drivers are finding it as they come out of the corner. So that's completely new. They didn't have that a lap ago. They'll be aware that there was a car in the gravel, but uh, the racing line is slightly compromised there as they come out of the corner. There, you've got Mike Price going through. This is Ian Humphrey's view. Uh, of course, you can just in the distance see the safety car, and it's still got its lights on. When the lights go out, that is the indication that we will be uh, having the race getting back underway. So, as yet, no suggestion that the safety car is in. It needs Jack Bartholomew to be off the road, so uh, as in into the pit lane, not back in the gravel trap. So, as soon as he is clear uh, and he's just arrived at the pit lane, the, the lights could go out. It's not too late on the lap. There's the last timing line. So, do we get ready for a start? They don't need to do another lap because the road is clear, unless there's an instruction for any sweeping, but it's too late now to get the lights off, I would have thought, so it's going to be one more lap. Jack Bartholomew is back in the pit lane. And no, it is going to be another lap, frustratingly. So, through they turn. Over the timing line goes the race order, Theo Edgerton, Ethan Hawkey, Charles Clark, the top three. And fingers crossed, we'll be back racing at the end of this next lap then, because the road is clear. You can see that the marshals are there with the slippery surface flag now, just to remind drivers, they'll know it anyway, but it's the gravel that, as much as the rain that they need to be careful of. And... Do I tempt fate by saying that it looks a little brighter out of the window? So, although the road might be greasy, it might get faster, it might get drier before the very end. So, 14 we started with, we're down to 13, we've got nine minutes to go, we still have 
no confirmation from race control that the safety car is coming in this time, but we're hopeful because uh, once it comes towards the end of the Grand Prix loop, the instruction should be given and the teams then can uh, get ready for the resumption of the race. So Theo Edgerton, we've hardly seen him, but he is the race leader. He built a gap of five seconds, helped in part, I'll grant you, by Jack Bartholomew going off the road. But can he do it again on the uh, restart? Can he build that gap over Ethan Hawking? As it will now be in second place. Ethan has had one second this year. And uh, Charles Clark, the man that is running now in third place, he had a, a good first race at Thruxton, but then uh, fell off the road, unfortunately, in the... Second race of the weekend, so Charles Clark turning his uh, fortunes around and has shown good racecraft in this. The almost anonymous Ethan Hawkey Porsche. There was the old running joke in the 80s, 90s about Porsches in sports car racing because you'd always have one AM car that would arrive and over the weekend as deals were done, uh, have more and more sponsorship, more and more decals on it, but it always used to start as the boring white Porsche. Uh, and Ethan Hawkey's car is uh, not yet drawing attention to itself for its livery. It is by the driver's pace, and it will soon do because it's going to go quicker because the safety car is due in, and we are set this time then to uh, go racing. So down they come into Clark Curve. Safety car will peel in, and the green flag is ready on the start line. So with seven minutes and change on the clock, here we go then, Theo Edgerton should nail the restart pretty well. He was able to control the pace early on, and is he going to get away from Ethan Hawkey, or can Ethan go with him now as we are back racing then? They cross the line with three tenths of a second between them. Clark third, Armstrong fourth, Humphreys fifth leading his class, and they're sixth, Alex Malakin. This is Ian Humphreys' view. Now, he's in a bit of a dilemma here. What does he do? Does he chase the opposition and try and get places overall, or does he just consolidate the class lead as Charles Clark goes through? Heads downhill here. Theo Edgerton, not yet, getting away from Ethan Hawkey as the cars accelerate along Cooper Strait, on board with Humphreys, and he's about to make his way into the uh, left-hander of Surtees, ready to loop onto the Grand Prix section of the circuit. Kurt Leimer there towards the rear of the pack, the Hong Kong Swiss driver. He, in turn, is going after Mike Price now. Pete Chambers having fallen back behind them. So Kurt Leimer, former hill climber in Switzerland in historic events, uh, now turning to a very different uh, form of motorsport as Edgerton and Hawkey dive into Westfield. Six minutes are on the clock. Whoops, way out wide. There goes Carl Cavers. He gets it wrong. He drills Mike Price. He ends up in the gravel. And Mike Price with damage. The totally innocent party. You could see that coming. And poor old Mike Price in his debut of the season is in the gravel. Carl Cavers, who was the catalyst for all of that by getting it wrong, limps past. But that's another car off the road into the gravel. Carl Cavers with lots of front damage is going to limp back to the pit lane and give the Beluga team work to do. And can Mike Price's car survive in that gravel bed out of the way or will we need to remove it? We'll find out as with five and a half on the clock, the leaders come over the stripe. Edgerton to Hawkey, six tenths of a second then. It is certainly getting brighter, it is certainly getting drier and the road is going to get quicker again. So you've got to feel for Mike Price. He did his level best to get out of the way, but that contact inevitable. You could see the, the line that Carl Cavers was on was always going to meet him. Now here, look, Nigel Rice is on his toes. Nigel Rice is up with Ambrosio Perfetti, and Perfetti in turn on the back of Alex Malakin now. So this is second, third, fourth in the AM class. Nose to tail, Malakin's car looking twitchy. Downhill they blast. Alex Malakin then having lost his class lead, coming under attack. And the yellow flags wave with Mike Price off the road at Westfield. There's the replay of how it all happened. Carl Cavers slewing across the circuit and just tagging Mike Price's car. Mike must have been thinking, no, 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 no. Bang, there it was. Punctures the tyre, damages the suspension, and around and around goes poor old Mike Price into the gravel. Not his fault at all. Four minutes are on the clock then. 
and the lead gap has gone up once more. Theo Edgerton is becoming very much the class act. He's on target to maintain the 100% record here, three out of three, as he uh, turns up towards Drew. It's a battle lower down. Fourth and fifth places here. This is Matthew Armstrong, another newcomer to the championship this year with the AM leader right there behind him, that being uh, Ian Humphreys. So Matthew Armstrong keeping him at bay. And Matthew new to the championship, as I say, from karting, having raced in the X30 Senior British Kart Championship a couple of years back. Perfetti to the outside of Malakin. Is he brave enough to try the outside? Yes, he is, but he completely runs out of road. Off he goes. Ambrosia Perfetti, it was a nice idea. Now he's going to try and find the traction to get off that wet, slippy grass at Surtees. Aims for something that's got a bit of hard standing in it. Here was the move, look, couldn't find the inside line. Went to the outside and just braked too late, ran off the racetrack and lost the back of the car. So, Ambrosia Perfetti, the reigning AM champ, off the road at Thruxton, didn't finish. Off the road here and has made the shortcut to the pit lane, in fact, so he's not rejoined. So it looks like it could be another non-finish for Perfetti. Theo Edgerton down towards the right-hander of Paddock. Paddock, I don't mean Paddock at all, I mean Clark Kerr. Uh, he will come to Paddock in a moment. Uh, over a second was the margin last time, and the gap this time is 11 tenths, actually, it's not gone up by much. Ambrosio Perfetti into the pit lane after his spin. There he is briefly shown as being well up the order because he didn't do the rest of the lap, but the team attends the car. Maybe he thinks that something caused him to go off. It just looked as though it was uh, an error on his part. He's away now, but of course will be effectively a lap down after all of that. So the uh, race leader remains Theo Edgerton, and we're going to be able to squeeze one more out at the end of this, looking at the clock. So Theo Edgerton leading by 11 tenths of a second. Now, a good little battle there, not to be last, really. Uh, Charles March all over the back of Pete Chambers as they round Surtees. And up front, avoiding the gravel, being careful of the yellow flags, is Theo Edgerton then. So the championship leader is on for three out of three, the bespectacled Worcester driver comes through. Ex Carter, he was a Ginetta Junior racer, graduated to this championship last year, took a win at Silverstone at the end of the season. Eight podiums last year, he was very, very consistent, if overshadowed by the James Dorlin Tom Jackson championship fight that James Dorlin netted in the end. There is number 40, Ethan Hawkey, coming up towards the timing line. So as they come through, the lead gap, 11 tenths, goes to 9 tenths, and a black flag for Ambrosia Perfetti. So Ambrosia Perfetti rejoined, but he's now being black flagged. This, I suspect, is for not doing the complete lap. So after his spin, he drove straight into the pit lane through the back door, missed out the whole Grand Prix loop. The gap second to third is coming down as well. Look at Charles Clark uh, getting very, very committed to this and catching Ethan Hawkey. So Ambrosia Perfetti, a black flag. That effectively will take him out of the race. Uh, I don't think he's going to respond because he's on his last lap anyway, but we'll see what happens. But uh, for second place, can Clark whittle away 11 tenths to get up with Hawkey? Hawkey is nine tenths back from the race leader. There's confirmation of the flag for Ambrosia Perfetti. And second and third, there you can see the margin. The race leader, Theo Edgerton, still up the road. Charles Clark hustles on. Been a really good drive this by Charles Clark. He uh, didn't necessarily have the pace early doors, but towards just before that safety car period, he really did get on with the programme, didn't he? Theo Edgerton, fastest lap of the race as well. And as the cars now wriggle their way up through the sheet curve and then Sterling section, the chequered flag will await as they are about to blast their way down towards Clearways, then Clark Kerr, then for the final time, there is Theo Edgerton. The chequered flag awaits, and so Theo Edgerton it is who is going to score victory to make it three out of three in the Porsche Visit Cayman Island Sprint Challenge GB. Theo Edgerton wins, Ethan Hawkey second, and third goes to Charles Clark. Matthew Armstrong is just going to hang on to fourth, and Ian Humphreys takes another class win in the AM contest as well. So Ian Humphreys then goes through, yet another victory. 
And sixth is going to be Alex Malakin, who led early on in that class, did a very, very good job indeed to uh, hang on in there. So Alex Malakin, sixth overall and taking honours in the class. But Theo, sorry, taking second in the class uh, to uh, Ian Humphreys, Nigel Rice being in third. But uh, an excellent drive by Theo Edgerton then to win by 11 tenths of a second from uh, the TPR car of Ethan Hawkey there in second place. So the drivers make their way through the back door, as it were, into the pit lane. Let's just confirm the way they came across the line then. Theo Edgerton to win from Ethan Hawkey. Charles Clark finishing in third place. Matthew Armstrong fourth. Fifth going the way of Ian Humphreys. Yet another class win. Alex Malik in sixth, ahead of Nigel Rice in seventh. Eighth, Kurt Leimer getting up with Pete Chambers and Charles March behind him. Ambrosio Perfetti shown as 11th, but black flagged in the end. Uh, Carl Cavers, a retirement with damage. Michael Price, a retirement with damage too, not his fault. And Jack Bartholomew in the gravel after that spin just as the rain started to fall. So it has been uh, a very good drive once more by Theo Edgerton, coming through as uh, very much the dominant driver within the pro category and uh, coming through with three out of three. As far as the AM class is concerned, Ian Humphreys, three out of three. So uh, the dominant drivers across both categories right now underlining their ability. And as the cars make their way back into the Brands Hatch paddock, they will race again at just after half past three. So there's a chance to have a look at the second race uh, later on in the day. Let's look at the best bits of race one. Theo Edgerton from pole position blasting away. Really good start by Ethan Hawkey. But try as he might, it didn't really work for him because Jack Bartholomew was able to claim the line through paddock and just secure that on the run up the hill as Ian Humphreys had a very busy view ahead with Alex Malakin with an obvious cross on the back in the red rear car going through on the inside to pick up the lead of the AM class. Charles Clark was up behind him looking for a way by Malakin running out wide and then as uh, Roger Perfetti started to mount an attack on Ian Humphreys. Mike Price went through and Humphreys got more committed to the task in hand. Charles Clark got himself up past Malakin first of all and then Humphreys dived through, going into Surtees. Ambrosio Perfetti tried as well and was up the kerb, but Humphreys into the lead of the class was away and gone. Cole Cavers lost out to Nigel Rice, and Cavers eventually would get it all wrong, just like Jack Bartholomew did at uh, the right-hander of Hawthorne, spinning into the gravel. That brought out the safety car, the rain fell briefly, race got back underway, and there was more drama still to come, because although Theo Edgerton built the advantage, Carl Cavers ran out of road, lost traction, and bang, absolutely harpooned Mike Price. And that did a fair chunk of damage on that left rear corner, put Mike Price into the gravel. Ambrosio Perfetti had this drama at 30, so rather than rejoin on the circuit, decided to come through the pit lane and rejoin, and for that, got a black flag, so expect him to be taken out of the result. Charles March making it his uh, seasonal debut had dramas as well. That all happened coming out of Surtees, headbutting the barriers. He was able to rejoin Charles March finishing 10th. But in the AM category, three out of three for Ian Humphreys. In the pro class, three out of three for Theo Edgerton, who came through for his third overall win of the season by over a second from Ethan Hawkey, Charles Clark in third. Second race is at half past three. We'll see you then. For now, from David Addison at Browns Hatch, Jerry Oak.